Well, hello, video. Welcome back to the show. We decided to do another live stream today. Got an uh, interview scheduled for later on this afternoon, but it's a beautiful day here today and had a lot of comments asking me to do more live streams. So uh, it seems to be the best time. This is 9.30 or 9 o'clock in the morning, Philippines time. It seems to work out well for a lot of my subscribers who are in America. So <clears throat> let me know what you think. Um, uh, the other time that's... Uh, it's been suggested to me to do it at night in the Philippines, say 9, 9 o'clock, 9.30 Philippines time, which is approximately 9.30, you know, Eastern time in America. So I'm flexible, you know, whatever you guys want. Um, I've sometimes decided to just try something out and did a live stream like 4 o'clock in the afternoon Philippines time. And all of a sudden I had all these people on there. Some were night workers from America, uh, other countries that uh, don't normally catch the live stream. So. Anyway, I try and do them at different times. I don't really put out a schedule, though, because I never know what I'm going to do. It depends on a lot of things. Like, you know, we've got a baby in the house now. By the way, uh, you know the saying, silence is golden? I really appreciate that phrase right now, because when you've got a newborn in the house, like last night, you work and work and work, and you rock and you feed and you change diapers, and finally, finally, he's asleep. He's laying in his little crib. My wife and I lay down, you put your head on the pillow, and two, three minutes goes by, and I was like, wah, wah, wah. And it was like that last night. I mean, I don't remember what time we finally got him to bed. Jen had to actually take him into our spare, spare room and uh, rock him and stuff, and finally got him to sleep. But that's the way it is when you got a baby in the house. But um, we're trying to get him so he sleeps at night and stays awake during the day. But uh, lately, he's kind of likes to sleep during the day and be awake all night. So anyway, Jen Geo Philippine Journey, how's the baby doing? Baby's doing great. He's healthy, happy. You know, he's uh, getting both bottle fed and breast fed, so he eats a lot. And uh, everything's going well. The problem I'm having, I'll tell you what, is uh, the birth certificate. It is such a pain in the ass to get a birth certificate here. You have to, uh, at the hospital, go up to the eighth floor, fill out there, or go to the sixth floor, get this form, fill it out, take it up to the eighth floor, fill it out. And they end their end of the computer, or whatever. Then they give you back some other copies. Then you got to take it into town, uh, into Dumaguete, um, near the fire station. There's this place there. You go there, give it to them, pay a hundred, and they tell you go. They take it, their paperwork. They say go someplace else, and you pay a hundred pesos. Then you come back to that place. Whole time you're carrying a baby around the hot sun, and then there's uh, then you have to come back in like five days and pick up your paperwork. Then you got to take that paperwork some someplace else, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just such a pain. I mean, it's really a pain. And then here in the Philippines, it's tradition uh, that the um, baby's middle name is the mother's maiden name. Kind of a tradition here. I don't like that tradition. I wanted to use my father's first name as the middle name. And I was real clear with Jen, told her that's what I wanted to do. And we all agreed on everything. And uh, so her and her sister fill out the form that's called a, a pr proof of life, to, uh, proof of live birth, or something like that. The first form you fill out. Anyway, they put the her uh, her maiden name as the middle name, and then put Rogan Ralph as as like a hyphenated first name. And everything's done, sent in, stamped, and stuff. And then I find out, you know, yesterday I was just really upset that it was like that because I don't want that on his name. I don't want him to have four names. And so I don't know how that's going to affect getting Social Security. I don't know how that's going to affect getting his American passport and all that stuff. So, and once you you got something you know written down here and it's been sent through the, the bureaucracy, good luck trying to change it. Um, and then the other thing is, um, everybody says, "Oh yeah, you know, you get a big bump in your Social Security when you have a baby." It's not no automatic bump. It's a real pain in the ass. Like here, at Social Security office in Manila is only open two days a week. It's Tuesdays and Thursdays from 8 in the morning till 11, and you got to call them. And you call, and, of course, you get on hold, on hold. And I talked to a guy the other day who was trying to call Social Security for something else, and he'd been trying to call them for two months and hadn't gotten through. So um, <clears throat> we have to do that and notify them of the live birth because they start the clock ticking as far as your extra benefits the day, not the day the baby's born, but the day that you contact them. And they make it really, really hard to contact them. So anyway, that's just the way it is. You know, bureaucracy, and it's bureaucracy in every country, you know. Um, let's see. Uh, the, 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 the Alfred, hello. 
Uh, Modoc Ruff, great news. Thank you. Uh, good morning from Sheldman. Hello, uh, Alfred uh, Kloss. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Sebastian's Philippine Journey. Hey, Sebastian, how you doing? Uh, Blue Tog May, congratulations to you and both. Cheers, Sebastian. Yeah, guys, check out Sebastian's YouTube channel. He's trying to grow, trying to uh, get in, get more subscribers and uh, get more views. So he's got, a, he's got a good channel. He's very personal on screen. So go and check him out and subscribe to his channel. Herb Hill, uh, uh, good morning from Cebu. Good morning, uh, Cardona. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, so, um, you know, being a father all over again, it's been over 22 years, and it all comes back to you, you know, like bathing a baby, you know, changing diapers, you know, finding different ways to get them to sleep, um, and just, you know, picking them up and handling them. It all happens, you know, it all comes back to you. It makes you think, though, you know, what it was like in ancient times, say, you know, thousands of years ago when people were living, you know, in Savannah in Africa or, you know, in America or, you know, all these places and living in caves and stuff. I mean, how did they survive? You know, how did they, you know, no diapers, no, you know, no formula, you know, it was breastfeeding or nothing. How the women even know what to do? No doctors to deliver the baby. Um, you know, nowadays, like when both of my daughters were born, it's like there must have been 10 people in the room, you know, assisting in the birth, you know, and you think, yeah, what was it like? You know, how do they even survive? Like on this island, the Philippines, you know, go back, you know, a thousand years ago. How did these people, you know, have have children and survive and they, they, they lived and didn't die? It's like, it's amazing. Uh, Gibbles, good morning from New York. New York's great, especially New York City. Love it there, but it's so, so expensive. Uh, Modoc Ruffstock, he's sub to Sebastian. Thank you so much for that. That's nice of you. Uh, Miguel, congratulations, Mark and Jen. God bless your family. Well, thank you so much. God bless you too, Miguel. I really appreciate it. But yeah, kind of catching our breath now. It's um, you know, it's like especially the last couple of weeks when we didn't know when the baby was going to be born. I was afraid to leave the house. I didn't want to leave her alone, and Jen didn't feel up to go into town for anything. So we just kind of been we were sticking at home for a long time. And now it's uh, you know, I've got to go out and meet people for my YouTube channel, and uh, and check. Don't I can leave Jen at home now, but uh, if we take the baby with us, it complicates everything. So it's all different now. So. By the way, if you, know, if you want to be on my show, and a lot of you guys have been messaging me saying you would, you'd love to come on the show, if you do, um, what I'm doing now it seems to be working really well, just having people come out here. Or I'll come to your house. If you live you know, in Negros, I'm happy to drive over to your house, your apartment, and do the interview there if, if you're more comfortable with that. But uh, we've got a really nice place here, and I got it's very scenic behind our house. It's, it's quiet. So it's a good place to, to film videos, and they've been turning out really well. So if you want to be on the show, you can come to my house, or I'll come to your house either way. But just let me know. There's uh, my YouTube, my uh, my email is in every single video, markfcornyahoo.com. It's in the description. It's hit more. It'll show you the email address. So what's going on with you guys? You know, what do you guys want to talk about? It's open forum. Um, tell me what you want to talk about. Any questions you've got for me? Let's try and stay away from politics and religion, but if you guys want to talk about something or ask questions about something. Oh, I know I get a lot of questions. How much did it cost to have the baby? Now, Jen did have to have a C-section, which, which considerably increased the, the price of the, the hospital stay. It all came out to um, right around $3,000, you know, U.S. Um, Jen's uh, C-section was 78,000 pesos. You can do the math there. We did splurge on the room, though. They've got this one room at Ace Hospital, which Ace is probably the nicest, but probably one of the most expensive hospitals in Dumaguete. And uh, Ace has this one room. It's a suite. It's called the birthing suite. And it's the only place you can have your baby born where they'll let you be there during the birth. All the other places, they, they will not let the father be there. You have to be, they take the wife away and they bring her back when the baby's born. So anyway, we paid extra for the birthing suite. And it was really nice. It was like two rooms. It had a living room with the, where the bed was in there for the wife. It also had a little um, love seat in there. Then it had another room with a dining room table, with granite countertop, and uh, chairs. And it had a refrigerator, it had a microwave, had a coffee maker. It was like a hotel room. And it had beautiful windows all the way around with views of Sicky Hor. And so it was nice. You know, it was nice, you know, expensive, but very nice. It made it worthwhile because when friends came to visit, um, 
they uh, they had a play there was comfortable. You know, so we had some friends come and visit us. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Up, up, up. You know, I don't want to miss anybody. Okay, here we go. PH Expat Prepper. Guys, this is another excellent uh, YouTube channel. He's actually working on getting his Philippine uh, citizenship. So he's learning Tagalog. Great channel with lots of uh, really good information. Yeah, I'm getting rest. You know, it's like you sleep when the baby sleeps. And that's what's so good about not being retired. And I don't have to get up every morning, go to work, you know, and be gone all day. And Jen's with the baby by herself and all that. So, you know, we work together and uh, I'm here. I'm enjoying every minute of being with the baby. And uh, it's, it's good. I'm getting enough rest. Uh, is the rest of the family stopping by on a daily basis? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, Jen's sister is here, and his sister and fiance are here almost all the time. Her mother spent the night here a couple of nights, the first two nights we got here, which was a big help. Yeah, it's hot, but you know, right now, um, Jen, uh, Jen and the baby were in the other spare room. They didn't have any air conditioning on last night because she likes it that way. I was in the other room in our in our master bedroom, and I had uh, AC on. Um, but right now it's like, we don't have any AC on and all. I got a beautiful breeze coming in off the ocean, which is, uh, right in front of me here. And, uh, it's nice, you know, beautiful weather. Um, ocean's been lovely lately. Every time I go out there swimming, it's been really nice. Uh, let's see. What do you think about couples saying bad things about me? I just ignore, I don't even look, I don't look, I don't read anything about it. I stay away from it. It's like, you know, uh, Joe Rogan talks about it, a lot of other really successful bloggers. It's like you're going to have haters. You're going to have, you know, people that have whole channels just to attack you. And yes, ignore it. I don't even, I tell people, don't send me links of things like, oh, someone said this about you and they send me a link. I said, I don't want to see it. I don't see it. I don't read it. Uh, if you know some of my videos, all my comments are held for review. And somebody, not even me, checks the comments. If it's a nice comment, we let it go through. If it's not, they delete it. I don't even look at it. And so that's kind of the way we do it. And, uh, before, I used to not even know there was comments. I didn't even read them at all for the first year I had my channel. Uh, sorry about the politics. Is the China water cannons attack on Philippines supposed to problem in the Philippines? Um, yes and no. Um, as you know, America and the Philippines are getting closer by the day. There are going to be 12 bases here uh, that the Americans will have access to. Some of them new, some of them that they're reopening. Um, the Philippine military is a lot more stronger or a lot stronger than people realize i think it's like a million strong army um and they've got all kinds of new equipment the americans and other countries are supplying them so there's no way china would ever try to uh try and uh, invade the philippines what they're trying to do now is they just want to claim as much of the south china sea as they can because of all the resources there and that's kind of what they're fighting about now and i, I think uh, the americans might even have an aircraft carrier <clears throat> in that area uh, in case of Taiwan, so I don't see anything happening there. Um, Murdoch, smash the like button. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Sammy, I love Dumaguete. Yeah, I love Dumaguete too, but um, I just go there for shopping and socializing restaurants and stuff. I don't like living in the city. Where we are now, it's perfect because I could be at the mall. If I left my house right now, I could be at the mall in like 15 minutes. I could be downtown, hard of Dumaguete in 20 minutes. And that doesn't matter if I'm in my car, if I'm on a motorcycle. So it's very convenient. So it's like right now, it's super quiet. You know, all I hear now is the waves, no dogs, no roosters, no noisy neighbors. Um, and so for me, it's just a perfect setup. Um, Pascock, yes, it's very heated. Um, we love babies. I love babies too. Okay, Izzy and Chris, this is a good one. Does anyone believe the latest Filipina P's video where she had a lawyer in saying that it's the law to provide for your wife's family, even uh, you, the spouse? I think it's BS. Try to enforce that. I that's I did not watch the video, but I did see it. It came up on my feed, um, and so I know about it. There's news to me. Uh, news to me. I mean, good luck enforcing something like that, but. All of the men I know that are, um, first of all, that's only if you're married. You have to be married. If you're not married, it doesn't apply. And a lot of these guys live in girlfriends. They're not married. So, but all my friends that are married are helping out the family anyways, you know. And uh, I've, I've helped Jen's family from, you know, the very beginning. Um, it's not a set amount every month. It's like different things we do for them, you know. 
I bought him a washer. I bought him uh, all beds. I bought furniture. Bought him uh, two refrigerators, um, a gas stove. Um, helped them rebuild their house, you know, with uh, put a concrete floor, things like that. And Jen's sister, fiance, Steve, has done even more than me. Like he's rebuilt uh, practically the whole house. I mean, put a new roof on, added a patio area, a sun, a sun porch, um, redid the walls. I mean, so much stuff. Um, I repaired her father's motorcycle. So I do it like that. Well, you know, you help out when you can. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, I didn't know it was a law though. I mean, that was, that was news to me. So you never know. Um, Philippine expat prepper, um, and Chris, nope, there are conditions to that. The burden is on the wife, not the husband. Okay. That's interesting. So the wife is required to help her family. You know, in a way it sounds kind of um not sexist but it sounds uh i don't know like old school or whatever but when you think about the culture here you know like the wages are so low <clears throat> so most people are forced to stay home when they have their when they get married you know or they have a child um they stay with their family and so there might be five six people living in a house and they're all working doing what they can to make money to survive and so let's say there's a girl and she's got a job working at the mall making say a hundred two hundred dollars a month which ain't much but that's you know helping the family survive and then you come along as her new boyfriend or husband and you take her out of the family and say well they don't have to beat her anymore yep yeah, she was supporting the family and so it's only fair that you you know compensate the family you know for the money that she's not bringing in anymore because maybe they they all worked and put her through college where she didn't do anything but go to school for four years. Um, and they took care of her. So it's, it's fair to do something. I really think you should do something. I don't think you should just like turn your back on your wife or girlfriend's family. Um, that's how most of my friends feel too. Uh, Mike, you love to travel. Mike, you love to travel. I think that's probably a YouTube channel. So check it out. Hey Mike, uh, Mike here is Cebu city far from where you are. Um, Yes and no. I mean, the problem, like Cebu City is great. There's a lot of things there, like the American consulate is there. But they're used, you know, there's not enough travel back and forth between Dumaguete and Cebu City. It's like there used to be the only two flights were at night, like 9 and 9.30 at night if you wanted to fly to Cebu. Otherwise, you have to take the ferry, and it was a really long ferry ride. You can go to Cebu, the island, but if you go to, want to go, to, go to Cebu City, it was a really long trip. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it's farther than you think. You can also take the bus there. That's how I got back. When I came back from America, um, I flew into uh, South Korea, then flew into Cebu. I was totally exhausted, you know, went to bed. But I couldn't sleep, woke up at like 6 in the morning, just got a taxi, went down to the bus station. That's like $6 for a bus from Cebu all the way to Dumaguete. It's like a six, seven-hour drive. And it's a rough bus, too. It's not, not a nice bus. But anyway, I got here, you know, so, you know, there's different ways. The bus is probably the, the most convenient as far as, like, you, they run all the time. And uh, anyway, but, yeah, I wish they had regular ferries running, like, on the hour back and forth between here and Cebu. That would be really, really helpful. Izzy and Chris, Philippine prepper, yes, but the way they spun it on the video, her simps were eating it up. She's a dangerous woman setting men up for a fall, okay? No, um, it's is that a batter bird room? Yeah, we have. Um, I used to have screens on these windows. I'll show you. Wow, See those windows there. I used to have screens on them, but since they're right on the ocean, um, they uh, you have to keep them clean, and we have them open all the time anyway. So I took all the screens out, and um. We have windows since we're on the second floor. We have windows all the way around this house. You know, every single room has windows with, you know, sunny, beautiful views, and we just leave them all open. And so we have these swallows that nest somewhere out there in the in the jungle, and they like to come in here and fly around. They don't. They never land. They fly in here. They zoom through the house. They never crash into anything. They zoom through the house and they go back out. And they do it this time of year every year, and I just let them in, and they don't bother me, and I don't bother them. I figure they're eating mosquitoes during the daytime. We don't have very many mosquitoes here anyway. Sammy, everyone's getting ready for 824. The solar eclipse is a huge deal. Some hotels are now charging over $1,000 per night 
in Cleveland for that time. Give me a break. Uh, doesn't really impress me that much. Um, I don't know what the deal is going to be here for the Eclipse, but, you know, it's been happening for all eternity, so it doesn't really affect me at all. I not really, I, you know, care about it one way or the other. I mean, more interested. I remember when uh, the Hale Bot came, Hail Bot comet came, and I was living in New Mexico or in uh, St. George, Utah, and uh, you could see it at night. You know, it wasn't going past like this streak in the sky, and, you know, when the, um, the Earth passes through the meteor field uh, twice a year. I can't remember the dates, but it, I think it's once in the summer, once in the winter. And I was living out in a canyon in Utah, and we could go out on the roof of our garage, which was like a deck, and you'd lay out there because, you know, clear skies, no light pollution, and you'd see a, a, a meteor like every, like, 10 seconds. Zoom, 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 really cool. But uh, that was more interesting to me. But I wouldn't pay $1,000 a night to see something that's going to last, like, what, four or five minutes? No. Uh, but good for people that are interested. Let's see. Um, it'll be an expat prepper. Chris, her business, YouTube, and clicks. So that's the way she will spend things. Yeah, she's doing amazingly well. I think she's got what, 150,000 subscribers. So she's a big dog here in the in the, the vlogger world. You know, as far as the girls go, she's uh, of course everybody actually. And she's got the biggest channel here, and everybody helped her out like. Old dog, Paul, Paul uh, McGill, he helped her out a lot when she was started out. Some of the other guys helped her get started. Um, but as far as the guys and the bloggers here in, in Dumaguete, at least, you know, Paul McGill, old dog, that's the big channel. That's the one that everybody knows him, you know. I'm just kind of like, you know, a little man on the totem pole around here. Uh, good luck, guy. Uh, could fly home, get a divorce, and come back. Yeah, good, good luck. A guy could, yeah, you could fly home and get a divorce in America and fly back. And uh, I think it's, um, it's uh, they, they do recognize the divorce here if you do it in America. So, but, you know, don't, guys, if you have any, any doubt, any doubt about, you know, your wife or your girlfriend or whatever and marriage and all that, don't get married. You know, unless you're 100,000% sure that's what you want to do and that's what, you know, is the right thing to do, then don't do it. Just stay single and live together, whatever. But um, yeah, I know we have a bird in the house, Mike. I know it comes all the time. Let's see. Um, Melmet Yilder, I'm sorry I ruined your name there, my friend. Every man has a story. Really liked the interview you did with Jeff, the broker from Taiwan. Hope you can get him on again. Okay. Um, I don't, I get a lot of times to say, hey, you know, get so and so back on. I don't show people's last names. I don't um, usually get their email or phone numbers or anything like that. Um, and I guess I should probably start doing that, but um, so I kind of leave them alone. Like I, I just uh, don't like usually bother them once they, they do the video. You know, let's say if they want to change something about the video, they don't like it. I've got a rule that if you don't like the video, I'll take it down and for no no questions asked. But um, yeah, so if, he, if he's watching this and he wants to do another video, I'd, I'll have, happy to do one with him. All he's got to do is send me an email or a Facebook message, and I'm happy to have him back on. Like, I don't have any rule, like, how many times I'll interview some people. Like, some of my friends, I've done three, four, or five interviews with them, so happy to do another one. You see, I had Nasi Lemak today, Malaysian food. It was so good. I never even heard of that. Uh, Harry Riles. Hi, Harry. Uh, congratulations to you and Jen on your new precious baby. I was 61 when our baby was born, and it changed our lives in so many ways. He's 11 now, so smart. He must have that from his Filipino mom. Well, how good, cool is that? So 11, so that makes you 69 then, huh? Or no, 71, right? I'm bad at math. <laughs> wow, that's great, Harry. Congratulations. Let's see, Tommy and Afar, how is life in Duma, Mark? It is Tommy from Finland here. Yeah, Tommy, I remember you. You were a cool guy. I met you, I think, didn't we meet at um, uh, Big Billy's? I would love to participate in another interview or just, I would love to do an interview with you, another one. Happy to do an interview with you, Tommy. Um, send me a message, an email at, uh, just if you go to any of my videos, click on more, 
and you'll see my email address down by my PayPal. It says Mark F is in Frank Thornton at yahoo.com. Send me a message. I'll either meet you someplace or you can come over to my house. I would really love to do another. That interview was really good, I remember. And a lot of people commented about it. And it was so cool to talk to somebody from Finland, too. So, yes, by all means, please, please contact me. And I'm happy to do another interview with you. Um, Malaysia food and Indonesian food is incredible. I've been to Indonesia. I've been to Bali. I've been to Jakarta. I don't remember the food there so long ago. Um, and uh, I, Malaysia, um, yeah, I want to go to Malaysia because Kuala Lumpur is an amazing city. But I was there back in the 1980s. I think I guys told you the story about I went to a fortune teller there, um, the Red Palms. This was back in the 80s. And I had one of those little Sony micro recorders. But actually, I've got that recorder here. It was in my box of stuff. I gave it to Jen. It still works. Little Sony recorder with the micro cassettes. Anyway, I recorded um, my uh, reading with this, uh, I guess, psychic or whatever. It's an old man. He's like 80 years old. He read, he read your palms, both palms, in like five different languages. Anyway, everything the man said came true over like a five, ten-year period. Every single thing. So very interesting. Um, see, Sammy, it's only four minutes long, but if it's overcast, then you won't see much. Would be disappointing. Yeah, that would suck if you paid a thousand dollars for a room at the Holiday Inn, and then you go out there and it's cloudy and rainy, and there yeah, you come back in a hundred years. Uh, okay, but I'm 33, but love learning these people's stories. You interview. I have a family in Guam, wow, which is almost the Philippines, and would love the idea of moving there to settle in my 50s. Well, the thing is, man, you got you're so young, 33. 30, your 30s, I think most men, if you talk to guys that are like my age, I'm 68, you talk to most men and you say, um, if you could go back in time and live, like, you know, live the rest of your life, you know, at another age, like not where you were in life, but that your body was that age, you were, you know, that age, I think most men would pick they're somewhere in their 30s. I think a man is at his prime in his 30s. Um, I remember turning 30 when I was working on a cruise ship. I was depressed. Oh, I'm 30. Felt old. But, um, you know, the thing is, there's so many things you can do now at your age to make money online. And I met people all the time who are they're digital nomads and they're free as birds. They fly, they travel all over the world. They go wherever they want. They work online doing whatever it is they do. And they're free. You know, nobody tells them what to do. They're their own person. And you can easily do that. You don't have to wait till your 50s. Now, if you love your job, I tell you as guys this. If you love your job, love your career, like you're, you have something that you just wake up every morning, can't wait to go to work, great. You know, that's great. But if you have a job and you're absolutely miserable, you're making good money, but you're miserable, you hate every minute you're there at work, you know, you got to look outside the box and find a way to escape. You know, don't, don't waste your life in some cubicle someplace. Um, any uh, the, the, uh, American vagabond. Yeah, thank you for watching. Hey, Mark. From uh, Medellin, Colombia, selling Jurassic Jersey, Amazon pays the bills. That's great, you know. See, he's got he's got his thing going. He's selling um his jerky online. You know, he's found a way to make money. Yeah, I just think you'll be able to spend more time with your baby. You don't have to worry about working. Yeah, um, unfortunately, um, like a lot of fathers, when I had my other two children. Which are both grown now. My first daughter, we owned a roller skating rink at the time, which still was our own business, which helped. But um, I was always, you know, busy back and forth at the rink and take care of problems and maintenance of a 16,000 square foot building and all these things we had to deal with. At the time, you're raising a child. At the time, we didn't realize it was autistic. So she didn't sleep and very stressful for my wife and I. And then my second child, um, uh, she was born and I was working for, uh, you know, a cruise company, Park West, and I was a manager. So I could see I was coming and going. I was home like, a lot. And then I went back on chips just to make more money. I wasn't making enough money and ended up, you know, I was gone. I'd be gone for two or three months, home for a month, you know, and it was like that for her whole life. So it affected things. And now I'm so lucky that, you know, I'm going to spend every moment I can with a baby and, uh, that's great, especially with my age. You know, who, know, who knows how long I'm going to be around? So I'm going to make the most of every minute. So 
hopefully he'll remember me. Um, can you show us the baby once? Like, sure, I can do that. I'm not gonna do it right now, but yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that throughout the. Jen, I'll do a video together too coming up. I'm just still kind of settling in here a little bit, you know. And uh, yeah, I'll do that. Uh, he's gonna be a part of the show, and I will definitely do that for you. I, I promise. Um, Sammy, very true. We lived in Penang for two years. Food was fantastic. Yeah, here in Vietnam, I've never been to Vietnam either, but I hear that in Vietnam, the food's incredible too. And when we were in Thailand, um, the food was pretty good and the service was really nice. The problem in the Philippines, at least a lot of the restaurants I go to, my wife and I will go to a restaurant and we'll order our food together and my food or her food will come. And 30 minutes later, the other person's food will come. They never get it at the same time. Or you'll order your food and they'll bring your food and your wife will say, oh, sorry, ma'am, out of stock. You know, so you already brought my food. It's been 30 minutes, and they're just now telling you that they're out of whatever it is you ordered. You have to start all over again. So those things happen here. Common. Um, thanks, Mark. I do that when I get back from Palawan. Great, Tommy. Please uh, look me up. I really enjoy, enjoyed our, our uh, discussion. Love to have you on again. But, yeah, um, all is good here. You know, uh, lovely day. I haven't driven my motorcycle since I bought the car. Um, I just sitting out there. It's all clean. Got a cover on and everything. But um, we, you know, of course, I don't. I would never have Jen on a motorcycle again. I will not take her anywhere on a motorcycle, and I would never, ever, ever take my child on a motorcycle. I see it all the time. I see foreigners out there on a scooter, wife or girlfriend and baby, and they're driving around on the highway, no helmet, driving along, not a care in the world. Little baby holding on to the handlebars there. And, I just, it just gives me cold chills. You know, I just, it's just not safe. You know, I just, you know, we bought the car. You know, the main reason I got the car was so that they would be safe. <sighs> yeah, I, I deleted and blocked them a long, long time ago. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, that's basically it. Not a whole lot else going on right now. Um, Health wise, I'm doing good. I'm going to start a workout program. I bought a kettlebell. And uh, I've been watching videos and things you can do with that. Um, I'm on the TRT, you know, testosterone replacement therapy. I got a nurse that comes over to my house once a week and gives me and some friends of mine an injection, and that makes a big difference in your your strength and conditioning. Your um, sleep better. You have more endurance. Um, so it's really a good thing. So I'm going to keep doing that. Joe Rogan has been doing it for a long, long time, so it works for him. I figure it worked for me. And I've been doing it now for, I started doing it actually a long time ago, but I had different effects or different uh, results. Like there's all these different ways they give it to you. And the first one was a gel that I got in Australia. That didn't work at all. And then they have these pellets that they insert into your backside. That didn't work for me either. So now the only way to make it work is, is you actually have to have an injection like on a regular basis. Um, let's see, a Jimbo. Uh, I've seen the same thing, a family of four on a scooter, including an infant, but I couldn't have a cigarette on the street. I just thought that was crazy. Yeah, what's with the smoking thing now? Like, I, I never really knew. I'm not a smoker, so I didn't really notice it, but apparently you're not even allowed to smoke on the boulevard. Um, you can't smoke in restaurants, so I don't know where you're supposed to smoke. Um, it's like uh, at the Ground Zero, which I don't go to anymore because they don't want me there. Um, they, those guys all go out and smoke on the patio there and throw their cigarettes in the sand outside, but nobody says anything about that. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I think if you want to smoke, you should be able to smoke. You know, I don't, uh, I, I mean, I grew up in the sixties and seventies, but I remember my grandfather putting me when I was a little kid in the shopping cart and he smoked a cigarette at the grocery store. When he was done smoking, he just dropped it on the floor and crushed it out. People did that. They just crushed it on the floor. And, um, that's a little too far, but uh, I don't know. I, I remember when my daughters, were, my youngest daughter, my oldest daughter was growing up. We were flying back and forth from America to England. Um, they were still had smoking on the plane. And we sat in the very back row where the, they had a little bassinet thing you put your baby on. And that was the, on the other side of the wall was the smoking section. And all the smoke came over. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, I just want my microphone. Hold on. There we go. Um, yeah, so uh, I don't know. 
I think I, I have some sympathy for the Filipinos because they have no other way to get around. They don't have a car. They can't afford a car. All they've got is one scooter for their family, and they got to get to wherever they got to go. And so I sympathize with them. I understand. But, I mean, the foreigners, when I see a foreigner who is, um, you know, a grown man who's in a boy who's retired, got a scooter paid for, he's driving around with no helmet with a wife and a baby or a child on a scooter, that I cannot condone. Um, TRT is $10 an injection, $10. Uh, I have it delivered to my house. I come right to my house. Uh, uh, Jake, Mark, can you describe buying medication there? Is it literally as easy as walking in a pharmacy and asking for the pills? Are they generic or do they have all the different doses? They have, well, if they have what they have, you know, uh, you know, the different doses you can get. Like, for example, I take lisinopril. Uh, when I need it, I only check my blood pressure. My blood pressure is fine. I don't take it. Um, and they usually have it, but if they don't have, they might have five or 10 milligram. I, I would rather have 20. Um, you get what you get. Um, the testosterone, um, I get that from a nurse who, uh, is works with directly with a pharma a guy that owns a pharmacy. The guy's wife who owns a pharmacy in Valencia. And so I get it directly from a pharmacist, you know. And I was tested before I came here, so, um, I knew that it was something that would help. Um, things, I'll tell you what, guys, so medications are expensive here. Um, lisinopril, which is a very common blood pressure medicine, when I came here, I went to Walmart, <clears throat> had my prescription for three months that my doctor gave me, and a three-month supply was $12. And that's without a discount card, and I just walk into Walmart, it was 12 bucks. Here, a one-month supply is like $25. And all my other, I was on a whole bunch of heart medicine, too, which I've since weaned myself off of. And I was spending about 20 or about $200 a month on medication. So if there's any way for you to bring as much as you possibly can if you're coming here, or maybe have that way someone can send it to you or whatever, uh, bring as much medication as you can. Because yes, you can get here without a prescription, not opioids. You can't get like, um, what's the one people say, Ambien. You can't get that at a, at a pharmacy here without a prescription from the doctor. Um, but anything else, blood pressure medicine, heart medicine, diabetes stuff, you can get all that at any pharmacy. As long as you know what you want, they'll usually give it to you without a prescription. Now, some pharmacies will say they want a prescription, but especially if you have the box or the, the empty you know, prescription bottle, you show them that, they'll usually give it to you. Um, let's see. Jimbo, smoking sucks. No way I can defend it if I'm trying to quit, but before my marriage, to you know, awesome. Yeah, um, I, was, I think it was one of the Rolling Stones. Which one was it? I don't remember which one. Um, but anyway, he said it was harder to quit smoking than it was heroin. That's how addictive it is. So I can sympathize with you there. And a lot of guys here smoke. There are a lot of guys I know that smoke. Let's see. Um, Jimbo, I think uh, I thank you for the charity if I need to rebuild muscles. Well, it's good for that. You get more bang for your buck when you, when you exercise. Uh, with weights and stuff, and they're on TRT. Um, and it's no big deal. It's like a little tiny, you don't even feel it, you know. And so, matter of fact, he'll be here in about an hour and uh, give me my injection, and that's it, you know. It's like nice and easy. Um, and it's just one of the things that I, that it works for me, you know. But, you know, talk to your doctor, get tested before you do something like that. But uh, anyway. Um, Ah, yeah, Mark. Oh, it's, my, it's hard to make a comment here in the Philippines about getting attacked. I don't know. You just, um, you know, when you're with your buddies and you have, like, the same political views, you can talk about it, say what you want about, you know, Trump or Biden or whatever it is you want to talk about. And that's fine, but when you just meet a bunch of new people, my advice is just stay away from hot-button topics, you know, because... You're going to get that guy that, you know, sounds like a great guy and you get along great. And all of a sudden you bring up something that's, you know, some touchy subject, touchy subject. And you next thing you know, you're into an argument with some guy you just met. So I just kind of stay away. I've got friends of mine who have totally different political views than me. And they're some of my closest friends. And they know how I feel. I know how they feel. We just don't talk about it. I mean, we don't live in America anyways. You know, so either one of us is going to vote, you know. 
So, uh, what's the point? You know, we don't even live there anymore, so you know, we don't argue about it. Um, let's see, Herb Hill Farm, Philippine Expat Prepper is a good channel. I would subscribe. Yes, a really good channel. And he's a really cool guy, very knowledgeable. Also knows about investing, so there's a bunch of really good information on that channel. So, if you're looking for a cool YouTube channel with some great information about Philippines, check out his channel. Let's see, Bahani Sabu, TRT works great. How many milligrams do they give in each side? Uh, it's just, they just one, one shot and one arm. I think it's 10 milligrams. We're doing 10. And he, this guy is, I mean, he's a nurse. And he showed me when he first came over to my house, he showed me a whole, um, PowerPoint presentation on, uh, TRT and how it works and what levels and all these different things. And it was really interesting. And the thing about it is like a lot of the guys who, um, do it themselves is what I was doing. I was, I was giving myself injections before in my leg and just getting it online or buying a pharmacy and doing it myself, which was, by the way, way more expensive than what I'm paying now. And I wasn't giving myself the right dose. If you give yourself too much, it can give you headaches, give you man boobs. Um, so you got to be careful with this stuff, you know. So you're better off to, you know, get a doctor, you know, someone who prescribes the exact amount and, you know, same day, every week, you know, consistently, and you'll find really good results. Um, you're welcome, Andy. Um, hey, Corey, nice to see you. Yesterday, I did the world's largest inflatable obstacle for you. Oh, yeah, I remember you telling me about that. Why You did it twice? Wow, lots of climbing, balancing, crawling, jumping. I have a couple of friction burns. They're worth it, though. Wow. I could never do it. I've seen those on TV. I, I would fall off the very first thing. Didn't do that. I saw um, a thing on YouTube the other day. And this guy's got a channel. He goes around like he went to the Navy SEAL. They let him do the Navy SEAL obstacle course. And this Navy SEAL ran it first so he could watch him and see everything you do. And this Navy SEAL guy, he's wearing like, you know, long pants and long shirt boots. And he just does it like it's effortless. I mean, like it's just nothing. He's not even winded when he gets to the end of the course. And this guy is very fit. He's a very fit guy. He's like dying, like, you know, 15 minutes in. And then he did the same thing with like the Army Rangers and all these different things, kind of cool. But yeah, those, those optical courses and stuff, they look a lot easier than it is. Let's see, I really enjoyed the original South Pacific. I didn't care much for the remake. Well, funny you should bring that up. I did South Pacific, and I did. I was a um, production stage man for South Pacific. Um, God, back in the 70s, we ran that show for like three months. And... Uh, I loved it, you know, it's a, it a beautiful show. Um, I'll tell you some things that happened. We had what's called a revolve. A revolve was like a great big round table, bigger, 20 feet in diameter, a big round circle, about 10 inches off the floor. It's on casters all the way around. Then it's got a wheel, a friction wheel, and a friction tape all the way around the perimeter. And there's a dial, you can control the speed, and a button, and, you can, and so you have a set on one side, lights go out, and you push a button and it rolls around. And then the other side has another set on it, another scene. Lights come up and you have to change the scene. And so we had a revolve. It had the hut on one side, you know, where the officers were in there. I forget what was on the other side. I can't remember. I think it was like the inside of a raider room or something. Well, anyways, we had a new tech working backstage. And he hadn't paid attention to it. You have to check everything when you work in theater. Anyway, it had a dial on. We should keep it on like two. So it'd go real slow. Because the actors were sitting on it while we were revolving it in the dark. Anyway, it was on 10. And so he pushes the button, zoom, it flies around. The, the uh, uh, thatch roof flies up like an umbrella, catches the scrim. The scrim is like a big um, cloth that goes the whole back of the stage. And it's like a net, a thin, um, hard to describe it, like a porous net. But anyway, it's like a light blue. And you can, when you hit it with lights, you can change its colors and stuff. You know, anyway, it got wrapped all the way around. It's a big mess. So, yeah, South Pacific. I did that show. Um, let's see. Let me go back. I think I missed some people here. Okay, here we go. Corey, at the end, you get to jump from 10 feet up into a giant airbag. Wow. That's why I remember jumping off a diving board at 10 feet. That's a pretty big jump. Hello from California. I lived on Leyte for a year before with my ex, but sadly she turned out to be a cheater. I'm sorry to hear that. You don't give up on love them, man. There's lots of really nice girls here. You can find the perfect person. Uh, 
Once a country, Vietnam State, once a country's population exceeds 100 million, the value of life decreases. Hence the high priced medications saving lives less important. Interesting, I never heard that. Sammy, that was so cool. He used to have a VW Carmagia air cool. That car is an icon, a collector. Yeah, man, I think of some of the cars I had. That car was a 66. Perfect condition. It was red, black leather interior. No AC, of course. Uh, six volt battery. Didn't have a 12 volt battery in it. Uh, AM radio. Um, paid six hundred dollars for it. Six hundred dollars. Um, and anyway, that car ended up getting rid of it because uh, I was. Oh well, I don't want to talk about it. But anyway, I lost that car. Um, and then I, before that, I had a car, a Volkswagen Bug, a '67 Volkswagen Bug which was also a nice little car. I rolled that down the freeway because it had the tires on it were um, retreads. So I think they're illegal now. It's where they take a tire and they put it on a lathe, scrape the tread off, and then they glue new tread on the tires. It's like the worst tire you can possibly get. I'm like 17 years old driving this thing down the freeway in a rainstorm, and I passed another car, and the thing just started sliding all over. We spun around like three times. Um, hit another car, rolled like three times, got hit by another car. It was a mess. I was lucky I lived through that. Of course, no seatbelt at the time. So, yeah. I also had a um, 1974 Grand Prix, a white one with uh, red pen striping, white leather interior. Beautiful car. And I think it had a 440 engine in it. Love that car. Um, and I had, um, let's see what else I have. Um, oh, I had Infinity FX45 V8 engine. I had a Camaro. I had a lot of cars. Um, oh, I had a uh, Mitsubishi 3000 GT. I had two of those. Those are great cars, too. Let's see. 133 in the chat and 18 likes. Hit the likes button. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. If you like my videos, I appreciate it. It helps the algorithm for some reason. And if you subscribe, I'm hoping someday while I'm still alive, I get to 100,000 subscribers. Like I'm inching up there. But when you get 100,000 subscribers, YouTube gives you a little silver plaque. You may have seen it on some people's videos. They've got this silver plaque behind them. You get a silver plaque. But the good thing is you also get a contact at YouTube, someone you can actually call on the phone or email and talk to if you have any kind of problems with your channel or anything. And that helps a lot, you know. Because right now it's like you have you can't, like, call YouTube up and talk to somebody if you've got a problem with anything, you know. There's just no way. Um, let's see. I know, brother, most opinions are very low. I, I think so, too. I mean, all my friends are in relationships, and they're all happily married or love, you know, full-time relationships, whatever. You don't worry about cheating. They don't, you know, these girls are just, they're just loyal and loving. I mean, more than any other culture. I've dated women from all over the world, and I can tell you, I don't think there's any better, um, women as far as wives and relationships in Filipinas. You know, they're great. Uh, Steve Fellows, retreads are only legal on back of big rig truck. Yeah, you ever seen that happen? You're driving down the freeway and a big rig starts losing its retread. It's like smoking and it flies off and flies on the, down the highway. Yeah, I remember seeing that before. But yeah, it's terrible on cars, especially on a Volkswagen, which doesn't handle so well anyway especially when a teenager's driving it. Uh, let's see. Why so many wild chickens? Man, they just, they breed, man. It's a bird. The chicken is the most popular bird, most abundant bird in the whole world. There are more chickens in the world than any other bird everywhere here. People just, you know, they just run loose here and breed. You'll see a mother chicken. She's got 10 chicks with her. And you'll see her a few days later. She's got like two left. I don't know what happens to them. I guess snakes get them or Cats get them or hawks get them or whatever. But, you know, everybody's got chickens. Jim's family's got chickens. Every once in a while, they grab one and lop its head off and cook it. So they eat them. They eat their eggs and everything. So chickens are a big part of the diet here. Chickens and fish. Uh, <clears throat> it's just part of the Philippines. But the roosters, I don't get it. Why people, because the, the, the cockfighting here is huge. I mean, it's huge. You go on a Sunday afternoon or Saturday afternoon, the cockpits here, every one of them, just packed hundreds of guys there watching these cockfights betting on them you see it everywhere you know it's like a really really big sport here apparently someone told me that 
the reason chickens are domesticated, it wasn't for eggs or for food, it was for cockfighting. That's how it all started. Uh, yeah, you can catch it for dinner if you wanted to. Let's see. Um, Jimbo, thanks for reminder. I just hit the like button. And by the way, I had the same infinity you had in my first. Week. Yeah, I, I, uh, this is back when I was doing really well financially. Um, like the peak of, peak of my career financially, you know, which didn't last long. But I, I special ordered it. An infinity FX45, uh, V8 engine. And I said, I want every option. Every, whatever options there are, I want them all. And so I special ordered it. I even had a cassette player. It had a little, little uh, button on the dash you push, a little little uh, um, uh, panel opened up, and there was a cassette player there. It had a cigarette lighter in it. It had a, a video uh, player in the back, which my daughter's never used. And it was just a great car. Um, and that car, that was a 2005. And when I came here, my brother sold it for me. So that would have been in like 2017. It was like high fifties thousand dollars, like fifty eight thousand. I can't remember exactly. And uh, when I, I when I was on a ship, I kept in the garage on a trickle charger. It looked like it rolled off the showroom floor. Perfect condition, brand new tires, everything. You know what I got for that car? I, the best price my brother could get for it: six thousand dollars. Made me sick. Six thousand dollars, and it only had a hundred thousand miles on it. This guy that has it right now loves it. I know who has it. Just loved it. Let's see. Um, I just saw uh, the like button. And by the way, I had the same Infinity you had. And my first car was a 69 Mustang Mach. Wow. That's a nice first car. You sold it for $400. Was waiting for Woodstock 2 in 1979. Yeah. Wow. All the 69 cars were cool. I like the 67 Buick Riviera. Love those cars. I like the 67 Impala. I like the 70. 374, 75 Grand Prix. Uh, Chester, hey Chester, how you doing? Chester was on my show the other day, guys. Check out his his video. Really interesting guy. Very successful. Uh, let's see. Can you catch and eat for dinner? Yeah, I, I don't know how they keep track of what chicken to bo belongs to who. Because if I leave my house right now and drive out to the main highway, which is like maybe almost a kilometer through a dirt road, and I'll run by probably 10, 15 chickens. And how the hell do they know what chicken belongs to who? So I imagine you could catch a chicken and eat it, and nobody would ever know. So I don't know how they work that, how they can tell whose chicken is whose. But they figure out somehow. 1970 Nova. That's that's kind of a plain muscle car. They are still around today. Nice cars. All the cars from the 60s and the 70s were great. Um, in the 80s, the cars sucked. This wasn't. I think with the exception of Porsche. Most of the cars in the 80s suck. Let's see, uh, any other comments here? I think I've been going about an hour, so if you guys got any more comments, shoot them out there. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Um, thank you for subscribing. Once again, if you want to be on the show, I'm so easy to, to contact. Just go to uh, more on the description. You'll see my email address on any video. Shoot me an email. Or for friends on Facebook, um, we can uh, you can contact me there. By the way, I accept on Facebook. I accept all the friend requests from guys as long as you got a picture of yourself. If you have a picture of your cat or your dog or you know your motorcycle and no picture of you, and I don't even know who you are, and you send me a friend request, I'm not going to accept it. I want to at least see who you are. And you've got something about. I look at the about and say like, who is this guy? You know, where's he from? You know, but if you send me a blank. Facebook with a picture of your cat. I'm not going to accept it, but I accept all the guys. I decline all the girls. Um, the Pinto Mustang was great. I never heard of the Pinto Mustang. I never heard of that car. Uh, just your opinion. Guess what's going to be the exchange rate dollar versus peso this year? God, I don't know, man. I don't even keep track of it. I kind of just rounded out the 50 pesos to the dollar, but it's actually, you know, more than that. Um, I don't keep track on it. The, the TRT cost me $10 in injection oil. Uh, many blessings to you and your family. Thank you, Chester. You know, Chester was out to my house the other day. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Um, see you next time. If you see me around town, guys, please come up to me and talk to me. doesn't matter if I'm eating dinner. doesn't matter what I'm doing. I'm happy to talk to you. 
Happy to meet you. And if you want to be on the show, just let me know. Uh, Stephen Phillips, it was the cheap 1975 Mustang. It really sucked. Uh, <laughs> it was the uh, Pinto frame, I believe. Well, wow, the Pinto is a car that blew up if you hit it, hit it from behind, right? Same like the Vega. Remember the Vegas? Yeah, that's when they tried to save gas. On the, yeah, a lot of cars, cars started turning shitty when the, the gas crisis hit. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you hit the like button, I appreciate that. We'll see you next time. Bye.